No Jews, no news. How many headlines have you seen about the Hindus being massacred by Muslims in Bangladesh? What started out as a rebellion against a corrupt government has turned into a full-blown massacre of Hindus by their neighboring Muslims. The videos from there are just horrible to watch. Are they being shown to us on news? I haven't seen any. How many headlines have you heard about the Muslims parading the streets of British cities endangering British civilians? Again, what started out as counter-protests by British patriots and Muslims has turned into Muslims going on the rampage in the streets endangering everybody. Just look at these videos. How much of that has been reported in the news? <laughs> And did you hear about the British government forbidding the sharing of videos of Muslim violence according to law? As this Fox News headline clearly says, UK government scouring social media to arrest people for sharing harmful riot footage regardless of intent. Right? Because they don't want anyone to see the horrendous stuff the Muslims are doing to British in the streets. Yet headline news about Israel killing Hamas terrorists is Israeli strike kills nearly 100 in Gaza school refuge, officials say. All for an IDF strike that killed 19 senior Hamas terrorists using the school illegally as a refuge. Like we say, no Jews, no news. It is unbelievable how the media ignore all the pertinent facts when it comes to Israel and the Jews. Number one, Hamas should not be hiding in a school. Number two, according to international law, civilian infrastructure used for military purposes is allowed to be attacked. Number three, Hamas is a brutal Islamic jihadist enemy that must be destroyed in order for Israelis to be safe and secure. Number four, Hamas is responsible for every single death in Gaza. Number five, the world should say thank you to Israel for fighting on the front line against the evil Islamic jihad because they are coming for infidels all over the world, and we here in Israel are the front line, as the world is ignoring the actual Muslim jihadi violence in Britain and Bangladesh right now, like I spoke about before, Israel will stand strong and do what we have to do, regardless of the world's persecution of us in their headlines and with their governments. Then we have this headline, where the world can shame us Israeli settlers for doing what we have to do to defend ourselves as well. Headline, four Arab Israeli women attacked by settlers after they mistakenly entered a West Bank outpost. Now for the facts that the world media ignore. First of all, too many people have already forgotten the lessons Israelis have learned and internalized since the October 7th massacre. We are at war. Non-combatants, Arab Muslims in Gaza, took part in the massacre and celebrated in the streets. 80% of the Arab Muslims in Judea and Samaria supported and celebrated that massacre of October 7th, and they say straight up they're planning more. And plenty of Arab Muslim Israeli citizens also supported the massacre. 
So every Arab Muslim in our midst in Israel is now suspect of either being a terrorist, planning a terrorist attack, spying and gathering information for a terrorist attack. It might not be politically correct to say this, but this is our reality that cannot be ignored. No, this isn't racism. This is our reality. So today's news includes a headline about Arab Muslim women and children getting attacked by Jewish settlers. I will now share with you the facts as put together by the Kol Yehudi news line here in Israel. Again, it's not part of the establishment media, it's an independent news station. Summary, there was no lynching of Arabs by Jews. What were those Arab women doing there in the Jewish community? And pay attention to how the media is brainwashing us. And now they go into the details. A, for those who haven't noticed, we are in a regional war, and there is a daily fear of terror attacks throughout the country, especially in Judea and Samaria. For those who haven't noticed, women have also been involved in terrorist attacks and massacres, crimes, and certainly intelligence gathering and support for terrorism. Some of them also Bedouin Arab women, as Hania's sister, the Hamas leader, right? His own sister has been arrested. Two, the hilltop community of Givat Ronen, where dozens of families live, is a settlement very close to the Arab city of Nablus in Judea and Samaria. And the IDF is slow in protecting them because they're so close. So they have to be extremely vigilant to protect themselves before any soldiers are there to help them. A very likely scenario that they live with every day, especially after this strategy was used by Hamas terrorists on October 7th, is terrorists entering the community by car through the gate, just like they did in Gaza on October 7th. Three, the incident began as an intrusion into the settlement. A resident recognized that a car with Arab license plates entered the settlement and then reported it. The vehicle then began to drive very wildly into one of the neighborhoods. Previously, they claimed that they were on the wrong road and they were stressed and nervous. Four, the residents of that community called the IDF and the local rapid response team, letting them know that an Arab vehicle entered the community, a suspicious vehicle, and it was traveling quickly between the houses, also suspicious. Remember, these residents, all residents, have a post-October 7th mentality, where any suspicious Arab presence is extremely scary. While the car was driving wildly, boys who noticed it threw stones at the car. I don't know if they noticed that there were women and children in the car, but they saw it was suspicious. It was nighttime. So they started throwing stones at the car, thinking that it, it came there to do, to do damage. The vehicle reached the dead end road, and the women got out of the car and fled on foot towards the nearby area outside. At this stage, the Jewish residents of the community realized that it was women and children, and they left them alone and left it to the army and police to pursue them and investigate the circumstances of their driving into the Jewish community. Again, Bedouin women from the Bedouin Negev community down south from Rahat, who came to this area, that's worth checking out. What are they doing there? They have nothing to do there. Next, I found out as much as I could, this is the reporter for this news line, as far as I know, no one chased them on foot after they left the car. No one beat them, no one lynched them, and certainly no one put a gun to the baby's head. That's another headline that was put out in the news. That's all been made up by Arab-Israeli MK Ayman Uda and Israeli Jewish MK Gilad Kariv. According to my understanding, the bruises from those women are at least mostly from running down the mountain, right, to get away from the, from the community. After they ran away, the youth of the community set their car on fire. That's true, and setting a car on fire is illegal. But understand, Givat Ronen, this community right next to Nablus, already has had terrorist infiltrations, not just long ago, that miraculously ended without any casualties. And there have also been infiltrations of robbery from Arabs in the past. So even if I don't like violations of the law regarding the car being burnt, and prefer that the IDF came and carried out the deterrence necessary so there are no infiltrations, since Nablus and all the Arab villages are very nearby, well, those Arabs should know that if anyone tries to enter a Jewish community caught and the vehicle does not leave, this creates deterrence. Today we are living in a time period where our loss of deterrence is equal to the potential massacre of residents, God forbid. So residents, we have to do something to deter the Arabs from even coming in. 
So does this look good? No. But yet the bombings of the IDF in Gaza, with them putting out pictures of body parts of children, also doesn't look good. Would I have preferred this event to end in a more nice-looking way without the car being burnt? Yes. But is it dangerous for the Jews that Arabs know they can enter Jewish communities freely without any deterrence? That's very dangerous. So if they were, these Arab women were sent to check the vigilance of the community, the answer is yes, this community is vigilant. Maybe even hyper-vigilant, but vigilant so it should stop others from trying to do it. By the way, I went to check out and found that several brothers of these Bedouin women who were in the car with their daughter are criminals. Some of them convicted of dealing in arms, drugs, suspected shootings, and involvement in the killing of an Israeli policeman in the Bedouin city of Rahat in Israel's Negev. So what were these women looking for in this Jewish community next to Nablus if they're from the Negev? If Israel's secret police, the Shin Ben, and the police are already investigating, they should also investigate this dubious matter. There's quite a bit of arms and drug trafficking between Bedouin Israelis and Arabs who live in Judea and Samaria. So before people run to join Ahmed Uda and Yariv Oppenheimer in their blood libels of settler violence, people should remember that we don't live in an air-conditioned laboratory in Switzerland, but in the Middle East, where there is Islamic Jihad against us every single day. And things are not simple and clear-cut according to the Western values. Not the bodies of children killed in Gaza and not the burnt-out vehicle of Bedouin women who entered the settlement on purpose or accidentally that has to be checked into. Everything here has to be looked into and understood the greater context. This isn't Switzerland or Kansas. This is the Arab Muslim terrorizing Middle East. And what about the brainwashing by the media? Well, even if you believe that the event should not have taken place, do you think it is reasonable that in our post-October 7th reality of trauma, that settler violence is the headline news that should occupy the media's agenda? At a time that Israel is fighting a seven-front war, right, including Arab Muslims within our midst, with our own tortured hostages, captives in Gaza for close to 10 months, and 80,000 evacuees from up north out of their homes, and armed terrorist marches in every city in Judea and Samaria, together with the lawlessness of Arab Bedouin crime in the Negev and the Galil. Yet, those are not all being reported upon, but this is? How many acts of crime took place this weekend in that same Bedouin city of Rahat in the Negev and the surrounding area, where the two Bedouin women leave and came from, that have been blatantly ignored by the media? How many robberies and rapes took place just in that community? How many arms and drug smuggling and anti-Jewish events took place? Why has the media not covered the seven Jewish vehicles attacked with Molotov cocktails by Arab Bedouin and stonings in the Azon area of the Bedouin? And how many headlines have been about the more than 4,000 illegal Arab Muslims who have come into Israel recently from Jordan, as reported by Israeli investigative journalist Kalman Lipskind, but not being reported by the media otherwise? Don't automatically trust the anti-Israel agenda driven by establishment media, even the Jewish media, where they don't report Muslim jihadi uh, violence when they can't blame the Jews. Everyone, think for yourself. I, I tell you, stop listening to the media. Stop listening to the headlines. You're questioning things you hear about? Contact me. Ask me, Avi, what's going on? What's the context? What happened? That's what I am here for at the Pulse of Israel, to give you the belief-based, inspiring, politically incorrect truth beyond the headlines that were not being told. Not by the media, not by Jewish media, not even by Israeli media. It's up to us to use our own common sense, and if things don't make sense, contact me and ask me. In the meantime, I hope this helped break down to help you better understand what the latest headlines are, whether you've seen them or you haven't seen them. If you have yet to subscribe to our Pulse of Israel daily videos, go to pulseofisrael.com and click to subscribe. And to support our work, to make sure more people hear, watch these videos, internalize these messages, and share them for more people to become more aware of the truth, click on the donate button every once in a while on pulseofisrael.com. In the meantime, Shalom everyone. And thanks for watching. Pulse of Israel, frontline videos from the Holy Land. Support our work by donating today.